Hey man, how's your duty guy? Hey man, how's your movie going? Oh my god, I'm such a fan! <laughs> oh, I'm so silly. Christopher Runciman. Oh my god, I've wanted to have you on this show for so long that I've had you at the beginning of every single show doing the intro. And now I can speak to you using your real voice. How are well, you? I gotta, I gotta tell you, Jim, it's, it's really an honor to be on the show here and to be who I really am. You are who you really are, except uh, let's move you over there because I'm on the right-hand side, buddy. That's how things work around here. All right. It's, hey, man, nice. how's my movie going? It's so, All right. It's the full fungus. Um, do we have any comments? DD. DD says, she says, woot. Woot. She says, ha, ha, ha. Christopher. <laughs> all right. So we are live mm -hmm. on the air. Let's just wave like that. Yeah, that's how I wave now. Both of us, same time. It's especially good when you see me from a distance and you're like, what the heck is he doing? Okay. Hi. Yeah. All right. We're with it. Um, for those of you that don't know why this man here is next to me, for one, yes, he does do the intro to Hey Man, How's Your Movie Going? But more importantly, <laughs> he's, a, he's a tall guy. Dang it. I'm trying to even think. Oh, I can't because I have to be on that side. Oh, Liam's Sorry, Chris. Hi, Leanne. Over. Hi, We're Paul. moving over. <laughs> he's tiny. Hi, All right. But look, this is why I do these things. Because that's there him there. Right there. That's him. That's that guy here, um, he does these wonderful one-page comics. By the way, com comics are for kids. I don't know if anybody told you, but they're only for kids. Um, but these amazing, amazing, he's going to blush, but this, this artwork, look at that. Look at that. You don't get better than that. You don't get better. He do, he do these in one day. Like he'll do a, one, a whole one-page comic. Let me, see. Let me find a good one here. They're all good, but like this. He'll do this entire thing in one day. It's amazing. So, And I, we've seen him do it. But if that's not enough, he's all, got all kinds of stuff, man. He sent me these stuff. He sent me these stuffs. So anyways, and he draws beautiful pictures of his friends wearing hair nets. But I sent him that photo, so. When it flops forward, it's really intense. So... Chris, give us the 10 second version of who you are so that we can get to the four hour version of what I am, who I am, and why I am me. And um, scene, go. So I've been showing in galleries for about 30 years and uh, as well as working day job. And so when, but comics have always been an interest of mine. So 2015, we started a comic book company and uh, by COVID, the start of COVID, we published 73 books and a, a couple of hundred people. And I run the London Art, uh, London Comic Jam here in the city and, uh, and focused more on my own stuff since the start of COVID. And since at the end of 2021, I stopped doing the day job, I, uh, I work at home on uh, books every day. So two o'clock every afternoon. I go on YouTube and uh, people throw suggestions and ideas at me for one page stories and I draw them or, or paint them or color them or do them in ink or pencil crayon or <laughs> so I got, so anyways, I got uh, another book coming out uh, this year. And what is a book titled yet, sir? Well, because I like shaking it up. Wait, the first one's called in, One Page Comic Extravaganza. Because it's in the portrait format, like comic books, it's, it's the One Page Comic Extravaganza. But next year's book is going to be in, or this year's book is going to be in the landscape format, so it opens this way. Mm -hmm. And it's called 
uh, one page story extravaganza. Thrown off. I'm I'm start a whole thing over again because I'm okay. By the way, I just saw that my beautiful wife Leanne is in the chat. I just opened the chat right now. Hello, everybody chatting. And yes, Leanne, keep your eyes on the road and your hands to yourself. But Leanne had mentioned these. I wanted to show you. Sorry, Chris. I'm just taking the wheel now, baby. Go for it. I'm done. Wait, watch. I gotta go like this to go full screen to become who I need to be. Okay. Oh, you're tall. Thanks. Look at these. Look at these. Awesome. These are stickers. These are high quality stickers made by D.D. Willingham. And this guy is in the movie. He, he uh, nice. He uh, he's played by Deacon Burns, and he has about ten seconds of screen time. But uh, <laughs> but damn, dude, that's what he says. Damn, dude, he's wearing a Magic Johnson jersey, by the way. Um, and then look at speaking of Deacon, she, a Naughty Boy sticker. Nice, so this nice. Is, these are incredible. This is Doctor Jonah, played by Tom Racine. One one of my favorite characters in your in your films. Thank you. Really, truly. Yeah. And oh, American Better Mutual. <laughs> this is uh, the the advertisement that maybe you'll see today. Maybe you will see that. This. That is uh, that's my soul brother. <laughs> that, uh, that character. Um, that was really, really, really cool, Dee Dee. Thank you. By the way, my grandfather says thank you. That's him right there. That's my grandfather. <laughs> oh, that's okay, I see in the background. That's the painting Dee Dee did. Of my nice. grandfather. Nice. Um, I love it. I love it. People are jealous of my family. People are jealous of my family. They're all jealous of my family. So, anyways, all right, back to equality. All right. Whoa, here on that side now. This is weird. Wow. Um, so I I have Chris on this show because Chris um has is doing and has done some voices for the full fungus. That's what this show is. This show is about the making of the full fungus. I'm making a film called, just by coincidence, The Full Fungus. Get out of here, Chris. You don't come back till you have my money. Oh my God. Uh, this okay. is his latest film because uh, there are a number of other mm. projects mm. that Mr. Jim Liu has done wow. and has put out he needs that are phenomenal. Look at this one. Autographed. That's Jealousy. Right. You can feel it. <laughs> That's a, those are all so good. Yeah, there, there's so much good stuff that you've done. And uh, to, to be involved in your latest is kind of, it's uh, I am honored. Um, whew, there's just so, so many uh, comments. So many comments. Uh, Ken Mora says, mind blown. I think he was talking about DD stickers. Dee Dee says, aw, thanks, Leanne. Uh, and then Leanne says, the, oh, I'm going back in time. Dee Dee, <laughs> these stickers are awesome. They are awesome. And um, Paul has gone hiking, but he spelled it wrong. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a G at the end of hiking. Right? And, um, and Dee Dee's happy face. So. <laughs> Did you see Dee Dee's next comment? She says, <laughs> oh, I could make you some stickers. Ha, ha, some ha, pants ha. stickers. Oh, pants. <laughs> the joke is Paul Pate does not wear pants. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I can't wait. Okay, Ken Mora. He says, this is a little foreshadowing. I can't wait to get my Gruber, but my mic isn't here yet. Get you my Gruber. So Ken Mora, here's an exclusive announcement. Ken Mora is playing a character in The Full Fungus. Yes, he is. His character is a musical producer by the name of Ennis Gruber. Gruber. Ennis Gruber used to be in a band called Mary Tyler Whore. He's like a, like a punk band. But now he's, he's a producer. And I'm going to show you what he looks like. This is kind of what he looks like. This is an early version of him. But uh, he kind of looks nice. like Although, that's terrible. He doesn't look like that. He looks, I'm going to show you. 
because that was my first drawing of him. I have a picture of him on my phone because I use him for reference. This is another tip, kids. Put all your characters on your phone so that when you need to draw them or redraw them or whatever, or pull them up on a, on a stream, you have them. This is him. <laughs> <laughs> this is Ennis Gruber. This is uh, Ken Moore's character, music producer, mm. and uh, ex-member of a band called Mary Tyler Hoare. Nice. That is an exclusive, folks. Exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. Don't give Ennis away. Yes. It's called pre Ennis. Okay. I've got Ennis I've got Ennis MB. I know. <laughs> so, all right. So back to uh, back to the strict agenda I have here. Agenda number one. Well, Chris, it says you make comics. Tell us about them. And we just keep going in a loop over and over. Um, well, see, okay. sometimes I get grants. So I recorded a couple of new songs last night for this film. Nice. And I would like to play you a little a bit of one of them. This is not necessarily a mink fungus song, but it is a jazz flavored song that will go in the background of something. And it's called The View from Montenegro. And it goes a little something like this. Whoa, that's not the right one. This is it. Here we go. Oh. All right, that's enough from this scream on wheels. My cousin <laughs> Becky Bergman, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody applaud. Becky Bergman. Chris says hello from Canada, Becky. Hi. Becky. I really um, like that jam. It, it, uh, I just kept waiting for the Dave Brubick solo to kick in. Um, oh, here, I'm, you want that? So okay, let me just tell you. Let me tell you. I'm going to talk. It says it right here to talk about the music. He's got a paper. Um, so when I first started making the music for Mink Fungus, who is like, who's supposed to be is like the lead character or the movie's The Full Fungus, named after him, um, I immediately started making super experimental, ridiculous jazz, like completely ridiculous. And the way I found that works best with when ma making a Mink Fungus jazz song is to just overload it with everything ridiculous and then scale back. Take this out, take that out, take this out, take that out. But um, here, let me play you, I'll play you a song. This uh, song is Fungus Number Seven. <laughs> I'd like a full paper written on this too, by the way. By the <laughs> Fungus number seven was the second song I recorded. <laughs> I'll skip a little bit to the middle, which, you, which it sounds exactly the same as the beginning. All right, here's fungus number five. This one's live. It's in front of an audience. I'll jump to the middle of this one here. Let's like that. It's here. Push the sunglasses. Right. I'm, and then let me, I want to find the one that's your intro, Chris. Uh, okay, so while you're looking for that, yes. I got a, I got a, a really in, in, uh, in depth question for you. Yes, sir. At any point in the recording of this music, was your wife, Leanne, concerned that you were going through some kind of Brian Wilson phase or, uh oh, 
you know, Jimmy just got weird. Are you calling me a, a tubby Tubkins fat boy? Me you calling me that? Like Brian Wilson, huh? Um, I do have a sandbox in my in my office here, and it's also a cat litter at the same time. Does it have a rake? Yeah. No, the cats can't use a rake. I, I already tried. Zen cat litter box. So, I don't believe in. I don't believe in restricting the cat's bowel movements. I think they can express them however they choose to. But uh, um, I just want to, I'm not going to play the whole song. Don't worry. I, I can get cat carried away. But I do, I have the opening of this show, and you've never got to hear much of the song. Um, is it fungus number eight, perhaps? I, I, I've heard this. I love this. Yeah. And then it goes into a song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I believe this is the first one I recorded. Anyways, that's it. That's all you get. That's all you get. So. Is that there, Laura? Um, so. Here's how it works. That's what I'm talking about, but the Dave Brubeck vibe that, that kicks up, and it just, yeah, it has a, you know, a guy leans over the piano. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at this point in the film. So we, we uh, Chris and I were talking before we went live. Um, I said I was I, like six or seven scenes into the film. Um, and... I have probably a hundred something scenes to do. Yeah, it looked, it looked like it. But um, I my inner time clock is telling me that I'm I'm on my own personal schedule because I'd like to have it. I, I've always said early spring. Um, at one point, I think when I first started it, I wanted to have it at the end of the year, but then I realized why, why? So I'm not. On, yeah, I'm not on a. I'm not on a schedule like that. I, I'm my own boss. Come on, man. Um, but let me show you something here. Um, so we went to Las Vegas a couple weeks ago. And when I say Vegas, I know you think casinos, but really w when I go to Vegas, it's about family because I have family in Vegas. Oh, well, I thought you were going to say fountains. It's about murder and hiding bodies, but, uh, desert. Yeah. Okay. So like I had a lot of. The film, I'd say probably 75% of the film, or three quarters, as they say in France. Um, I had I had most of the film kind of laid out in like this happens, this happens, this happened, little notes, but it was scattered everywhere, literally on different apps and different pieces of paper and different just all over the place. But I and and it was all up here. Yeah. But um I had to sit down and say, you know what? I need a. Ro I'm at the point where I need the roadmap because I'm getting into scenes where I don't know what the next scene was. Like, what happens after this? Because when you're in the mix of it, you you can get lost really easy. So, I when we went to Vegas, um, I was in a coffee shop really early in the morning, and I decided I told myself I'm not leaving this coffee shop till I've plotted out the entire film, all of it. Like this happens, this happens, this happens. Knowing that when I did that, I knew that I could move things around or scratch things out later if I want. It's not in cement, but it is in ink. So, but anyways, here's what it looks like. I'll do it from far so you can't copy it. <laughs> but uh, this is like the first page and then it has another page and then it has another page. Stop it, Chris. And it has another page. Go back to the last one. Here, you can come. Go back to the last page. <laughs> and credits roll. <laughs> yeah. That's the full fun. That's the entire film. But I'm up to How here. Take you? So I'm up to here right now. That's literally where I'm at. Right there. Copy it. You can copy that. Liquor Ram. I read that wrong. Locker Room. <laughs> so all of the scenes that you saw are... For all intents purposes, done. However, however, you're going to see a clip right now. For example, this is from the fight scene that, that they're at an MMA fight, 
and uh, Brandy Fungus, the uh, which would be the daughter-in-law of Mink Fungus. Mm. Um, she's fighting in a fight, and what you're going to hear is there's no music. You won't hear any music because I didn't add it yet, and the crowd level is not adjusted. But you'll get a feel for what it, a feel for what it kind of. I almost did Christopher Walken on accident right now. That would have been. Do your walking. Say, introduce it as walking. You, you do it one time and then I'll do it because I don't. I can't do Christopher Walken like you can do him. Mine always sounds like it's some kind of episode going on in my brain. So you gotta you gotta bring it up and then bring it down. The other guy, this guy, is pooping on my front stairs. It was crazy. I'll stick with Bono. Pooping. It's all about pooping. It's all about Bono. You know, I wrote I this one. <laughs> Guy. No. You know, I sat down to write the full fungus, but I realized it was right in me. So, anyways. Okay, so we're going to watch a little bit of, uh, of the full fungus. This is a little fight scene, and you get a little taste. A little taste. And, um... Brandy is the girl that doesn't talk in this movie. I mean, in this scene. She talks in the movie. But here we go. We're going to watch it. Folks fighting out of Palmdale, California, by way of Boca Raton, Florida, with a professional record of 17 wins, six losses, and one draw. The two-time local fighter of the year, Yolanda Last Rights Ferguson. And her opponent with a record of seven wins and no losses, a mixed martial artist fighting out of North Pasadena, California, Brandy the Beast Fungus! Get ready to say goodnight, bitch. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. We got him. That's great. That's so great. Yes. So, um... So, I go through a vast array of emotions while making this film because it's such a, a giant, it's like being climbing a, a mountain. It's like climbing a mountain. Almost there, man. I'm almost with the walking. So close. I'm, so I'm close. walking. I'm walking it. Yeah. Um, I'm walking that line. But it is almost like climbing a mountain because you look where you've been and that could on one hand, you're like, yeah, this is great. Look how far I am. But on the other hand, you're like, oh, man, look how far I got to go. Um, there's moments I look at what I've created so far, and I'm really excited about it because I can imagine how if things go uh, as I hope they go, it, I'll be very happy with it. It'll be a good film. Um, and then there's times where I – this is just being real, man. There's times where I think to myself, I'm doing what I do, but I don't feel like I progressed in this film. Like there won't be, people won't watch this film and go, oh my God, this film was a jump in animation quality. However, stop, Chris, don't look at me like that. However, I say that that's not the goal of this movie. I never sat out, I never sat down and went, I want this movie's animation just to blow people away and to be like, oh, what I do want to blow people away in this movie is like how it's put together and how you, how you, feel when you watch it like wow that was really good i want to see that again like or that was really well put together so i feel good about it i don't feel you should I yeah i'm not i'm not um i'm not kicking myself over that but uh, and, and people are going to have those reactions i think that uh you're you're very humble in in the sense that uh you're highly productive you're very prodigious in, in the amount of output that you have and the ability that you have to take things a step at a time Sure, if you look at that book of all those pages and 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 then just keep always looking about, oh, I've moved down one line. Yeah. Oh, God, that's the next line. If you do it like that, you're never going to have that sense of fulfillment. And, and it's always going to look like that mountainous, mountainous <laughs> obstacle. But I think that the way you're approaching it, you've got your ballpark objective, and now you're just chopping at the tree, chopping at the tree. Chopping You're chopping at the tree. Is that a tall joke, pal? <laughs> no, Mr. Bunyan, it is not a tall joke. So, 
So, so I think there's something commendable about that. I think that uh, the fact that you've got such a unique style and and it's not like, oh, your style is very unique. No, it's not that. It's you specifically have your own style, your own voice. And that coupled with the fact that like, there's comments here about uh, Didi here says uh, the characters are so cool and original and she's she's on point with that. I mean, there's there's this... Uh, to, to walk in the Luan and the Jim Luan verse, it would be a really interesting place to be, you know, because there's such a fantastic, diverse array of characters that are in there. And everybody's got some degree of character. Like there's no, you, you don't waste time with the people that just stand there, you know, and look all uniform and that. And everybody has their own stylistic face. And it's nice. I, w I was watching, um, I am not into anime, really, but I was watching a show called Lupin. I've been yeah. watching some clips and things like that because it's an anime that takes place in a world like my world does, you know, or the regular yeah, world. It does, yeah. And I was just watching some of the animation tricks that they do, you know, the camera tricks, because it is very... I saw this little mini documentary on YouTube, and it's about limited animation and, and how the word limited animation... Is not something that they wear with shame. They wear it with pride because they're saying, yeah, the animation is limited, but let's show you how good we can make something without. It's like making an album like with limited instruments. The album's not going to be worse. It's going to, your material has to be better, you know? And that's kind of how I look at limited animation. It's like, I, there's nothing wrong with dazzling people with animation because I, I get dazzled. I love great animation. But sure, but don't you think I, the real creativity I'm comes with a limitation? Yeah, I'm not setting out to do crappy animation, but I'm. But at the same time, I I'm not setting out to like have the audience sit there and go watch this animation for 12 minutes, you know, it, like that's not how I tell a story myself. Yeah. You know, unless it's like a musical part, then yeah, then then I might. So, but uh, Paul says your animation is stupid as you are. What the Paul? Paul. No, he Paul. says. Wow. He says, your storytelling is where your growth is. Don't talk about my growth on camera, Paul. That was a private medical thing. Hello. The artwork, animation, and production are where they need to be. Thank you, yeah. Paul. And Paul has been one of my go-tos for... Um, I always make this joke that um, I'll go to Gary with a concept uh, hey, I want to do this. I want to do that because Gary Hodges will be is always very honest. He'll tell me, uh, and 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 it just our relationship just kind of formed like that from the day one. So that's I have him for that. But then Paul, I've always gone to like Paul. Look what I did. You know, what do you think? Does, does this make sense to you? So I get a good a good mix. And now I go to Chris for just spiritual uh, motivation. So yes, I am the master of crappy animation. Paul, you are. How do you ban somebody? Block. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then uh, for sure, Christopher, each one has their own distinct. Thank you, Dee Dee. That was very sweet. Very nice. I am um, very, very, very happy with where I'm at with the film. Um, the challenges I have. Um, you know, there's certain challenges that you have that you know you can conquer. You just have to go through it. You know you can. And I have, there's a few of those I know I'll knock out. Not a problem. The ones that kill me, the ones that are like, oh, the, this is out of my comfort zone, are always the technical problems, technical challenges. And I found, because I'm using Adobe Animate, which is, the, the result is going to look very similar to my best animation that I've done already it's going to look very similar to that but um but to get there there's been some like to do some basic things in animate i've been finding these little roadblocks like these little stumbling blocks and every time that i power through and i finish one of i conquer one of them i feel good about myself for like 10 minutes and then i'm pissed i'm like why did i do have to do that you know, so I want it to go. I don't want that to be where the, the energy of my brain is going to. I don't want to have to fix the technical problems. But sure. I have. So far, so good. And I have. And, you know. Um, so uh, Ken Morris says. <laughs> wait, first Paul says. Yeah, yeah. 
Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, Ken says, Paul is awesome in his own phonetic brute style. Yes. And of course, oh. Paul's Googling that because he doesn't know. <laughs> I love Paul's um, honesty. By the way, uh, Chris, homework assignment. I'm going to give a twin homework assignment to two people. Okay. One to Chris, Run C Man, and the other to Ken Mora, who is Bella Fay Media, this guy. Um, I definitely want you guys to check each other. Give each other a sniff, as the dogs say. Well, we, we've already looked in, in, into Ken's stuff. He's already looked oh, okay. Yeah, yeah and you, guys, you guys would hit it off, definitely. I know what he's doing. There's, there's, uh, it's, it's pure, you bro. Uh, oh, before I forget, uh, I wrote down that one-page suggestion that was uh, suggested in the, in the talk earlier. I forgot what it was. What was it? Cat Zen Garden with Rake. Oh, no. <laughs> and that's salty and beady. Nice. So you this know is I'm going to do it. By the way, for those of you that haven't seen and haven't seen Chris's daily stream, you stream for about an hour and a half a day. It's Monday at to Friday. Monday through Friday. It's at, I'm going to start with Pacific. It's at 11 a.m. Pacific on YouTube. On how do people find your YouTube channel? My name. Your name? It's well, it's been great having this is usually what they say at the end of the show. It's been great having you on the show, Chris. So, anyways, so <laughs> that's usually what happens at the end of the oh, show. That didn't take long at all. It's over, thank God. <laughs> so if they type in Christopher Runs, it's not run C C I C I M A N. Okay, run C man. If they yeah, you're gonna be the only one that comes up with that. And uh and it's amazing. I can't believe the quality of work that you put out every single day. And, the, and it's all, again, it's, what did I call it? At one time I said it was, it was Im, improv art. No, improv, improv. I, I used improv and. You told and me that I don't do. You told me it's more like watching me do a painting a day, which. Lori and I talked about, and you know, because I was crying, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it was um, it was a really nice thing to say. It's the improvis. It's like it, it is like it's it is improvisation. It is like art improvisation. Was that it? Yeah. Art improvisation. It was art prov. It was a terrible, terrible word I made up, but but you know, <laughs> it's just uh, tapping into the stream. It's if Bob Ross did improv. <laughs> a, lot of, if, a lot of squirrel impressions. If Bob Ross was on SCTV. I'm going to draw a little bit of fun. Uh, it's a little bit. Like, you, know, you get a lot. You get a lot. So. Me, I'm a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. So we're going to go back to our list here. Because we're going <laughs> to. Didi just wrote one page jazz. And thank you very much, Ken, for your comment. Oh, nice. Yes. Art prov was that it? It was art prov maybe. I think it was art. I think it was improvisational art. No, no, but it was a word. I mixed them together. Okay, I can't remember that. We'll have to go. Uh, counselor, Saucy. can you check the record? Counselor, can you read Saucy. that? What was it? Saucy. Yes. Um, okay, so now. Okay. You're Where are we on the list? You're going to be very impressed. Chris, uh -oh. would you mind? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the gopher snake, if you don't mind. <laughs> what is the gopher snake? Who is the gopher snake? He's an entertainer. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so the gopher snake is a character that kind of floats throughout the film. It's this pro bowler, but in my world, in the Lou Hanaverse, as you as you kids call it, um, this guy's like the Michael Jordan of you know bowling. He's like uh, just like a very fiery uh, bowler that is just you know he, uh, very well marketed and an angry guy, and um, and Wilt. One of the main characters in this, the son of Mink Fungus, Wilt Fungus, idolizes this guy. So um, he appears in the movie. But doing the voice of the bowling announcer that always talks about the gopher snake 
is our dear friend Christopher Runciman. He does the bowling game, and I play like a color comment, comment, commentary guy. Um, but that's a hard word. So Chris is like the main main uh, voice. So if you don't mind, Chris, if you're okay with it, I would like to play just a few of the lines that you sent me. Okay, I'll just play a few, and they are raw. And I haven't edited edited them, but let's do it like this. Don't don't play the one where I make a mistake and curse for five minutes. Um, you know what? You said some slurs against the Slavic people. And they had it coming. So, but how do we do this? All right, this might be or may, or may not. True. Can you see like that? I am sharing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if I what if I open up this file? Will it work? Did it work? I can't tell. It has an open on the screen now. Dang it. All right. Dang it. We're gonna do like this. This is how we're gonna do it. It's okay, because we're gonna we're gonna do like this. Okay. Okay. So Chris, tell us about the tell us about your recording adventures while I pull this up. Okay. Um, so I recorded he sends me the script and I just sit down in the studio here with uh at night when Lori's asleep and I'm awkwardly talking to myself. And uh, I just I just go through the whole script. And uh, so, but the problem was that, I, and I sent them to him and the sound was awful because my computer had switched mics and I didn't realize that. So, so Jim says, hey, that's great. Oh. But uh, can you do the entire thing again? Just, uh, can you use a better mic? Cause you're stupid. And so then, <laughs> I when I was done crying, yeah, no, it, it just you send me the scripts, I read them. It's it's uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. He sends me things, and and then he says, you know what? Don't even worry about that. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna put that in. But if you want to do it anyways, <laughs> because because he knows I'm gonna do it anyways. <laughs> like, <laughs> The commercial bit, like that, that, that was just fun. And, you know, and, his, and his writing makes me laugh. So I have to read it once before I do it because that's where I get the laughter out. <laughs> All right. So there is the gopher snake. You can see him nice and clear, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Give me a second. Jazz Richardson. Yeah, that, that's another thing. The gopher snake's real name is Jazz Richardson. He's a very... And by the way, if you want to see the inspiration for the gopher snake, go look up a bowler named um, Weber. Pete Weber. Yeah. Go look at Pete Weber. I got in, obsessed with watching Pete Weber clips. He is very <laughs> awesome and hilarious and very angry sometimes, but he's awesome. Oh, yeah. So we're going to play some of Chris's lines. Um, this is the uh, bowling commentator, and I'll play about like, you know, 20 seconds or so worth. Wow, that was an impressive shot by Richardson. Once again, the gopher snake smells blood and goes for the throat. That's the kind of precision and skill that separates the pros from the amateurs. Tonight's match is brought to you by Old Gold Beer. Taste the pride. Coming back from six pins down, we could be looking at a Salt Lake City miracle tonight, folks. Jazz Richardson taking his time, working his spot. This is a fast lane, so he's going to want to watch the curve. He rolls. Looks like the lane conditions are changing as the game goes on. The oil pattern's breaking down, which means the bowlers will have to adjust their shots accordingly. <laughs> Just look at the intensity in the cover snake's eyes. Sometimes it's not just about knocking down pins. It's about avoiding the ones that are left standing. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I just heard somebody say that. All right. So that's the go thing. That is awesome. And there's, I got more of that. So I got to sip, sip through that. And there's going to be some uh, flashback scenes or some motivational go, go for snake scenes. There's also going to be, I will play the go for snake. And there will be some scenes where he's going off. And we have your comment, your comment commentary is that the right word commentary you have your commentary to that you did it. well i did it you did Not, it say it like uh, christopher walken we've you got it. commentary <laughs> all right whatever so 
commentary. It's perfect. That was perfect. Okay. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you're getting some. Look at this. You're getting some love. You oh, are getting some love. I got a cool thing to show you. Okay. Okay. Anyway, and, and then we go back to the list. All right. Uh, this is a page that we did together. What? How can that possibly be? What? what? Yeah, this is uh, one of these random one page ideas that came through that somebody suggested in 500 years from now. Scientists will come, uh, will understand the Luan verse. And so, this ridiculous science scientist character, Dr. Cobal Johansson, uh, that keeps showing up in all these 500 uh, years from now pages, actually goes to Jim's, you know, universe. And the coolest part of that is that Jim did it himself. And so, we see all those great characters. Very nice. I had, I had a really good time doing this, and I'm glad you liked it. I because I was oh, like, yeah. I, can't, I can't redo it. It's impossible. <laughs> yeah, it came out. It came out so well. That's going to be in a new book. Is that room really going to be in the book? That's yeah, great. yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm just prepping some more artwork here. I'm going to show in a second. Uh, let's see if this works. Okay. All right, let's go back to the split screen. Hey, Chris, I had a great time doing that. I got a lot of really good feedback from that, too. There's um, great. Your fan, fan base is very nice. Yeah. Um, say. And then Paul has a comment about my speaking voice. He says, great voice. Yeah, you did a good one. Thank you, Paul. What, yes. And then Ken agrees. Yes, Jim's speaking voice is great. It's phenomenal. And Dee Dee says, I'm going to slap you, slap you five times. Yeah. So. And, uh, with a velvet glove. Yes. Um, so I want to show a little bit. Of, and this is, and this is sticking to the plan. That's right the list. I'm going to uh, show a little bit of uh, what the reference looks like sometimes. Sometimes. Nice. Okay. So, um, okay. So first I'm going to show a little bit of an actual thing. Can you see that? Is that Pat Sajak? That's my father. Is that, is that is your father Pat Sajak? <laughs> no, that's not Pat Sajak. That is um, Alex Trebek. And I, I found that photo of him. Oh, sorry. I found that photo of him. I'm going to reopen it. Sorry. Uh, old man driving the car. Okay, here we go. All right, so I was looking for a, a, a reference photo for this for the game show host. By the way, the game show host's name is Larry Carlisle, whom, whom I play. And uh, yes, that is Alex Trebek. And I really like that pose and everything, just the, the vibe of it. So what I did is I went and I found... Uh, is that a cat, by the way, on the screen? Cat cam! Hold on, let me get rid of this. Okay. How'd you do that? That was impressive. It's cat cam. I got an extra camera set up for whenever Cormid visits me in the studio. Cat cam! That means come that's here. Cat. Actually, that means the sushi's gone cold, but, you know, that's okay. <laughs> so, um... Okay, so... Then, so I took that Alex Trebek picture, and I, and I, what the heck, how come I can't share it now? And then I, did and this. then, then I did this. Uh oh, hello. A lot of work for that Ugh, to That's get good. that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so I had uh, Larry Carlisle. He's hosting. Um, oh, and you get a little sneak peek of the grabber. That's the grabber right there. And uh, this is a scene where they're, it's the game show called Cash Grab that Larry Carlisle's been hosting for years. By the way, Larry Carlisle, Carlisle in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. 
But uh, I want to show you a little a little taste of cash grab. Okay, here's a little taste of Wilt Fungus as a guest on Cash Grab, nice. and you're gonna see you're gonna see the grabber at the beginning. Here, here we go. Uh, wait, I gotta get this set so I can remove us from the stream too. Okay, here we go. Cash credits to play the Gravitron 5000, or you could double down and play the board. Our remaining categories on the board are Cash Cow, 23 Skidoo, Angel Investor, and Risky Business. So what's it going to be, Walt? Wilt? Larry, I'd like to play the board and double down. Sorry, Colleen, that is not the correct answer. The board now goes over to Wilt. Wilt, what do you say? Well, Larry, I believe it's Willie Ames who played the character Buddy Limbach on Charles in Charge. That is correct! And with that, you take control of the board, my friend. In a moment, you can choose to use your cash credits to play the Gravitron 5000, or you could double down and play the board. Our remaining categories on the board are Cash Cow, 23 Skidoo, Angel Investor, and Risky Business. So what's it going to be, Walt? Wilt? Larry, I'd like to play the board and double down. And that is cash grab. <laughs> Two things. Two things. Yes. yes. One, I love that you animate a character who miss who gets a person's name wrong. <laughs> and leave it in. I love that. I think maybe the person recording that voice actually did that in real life and left it in. <laughs> it's excellent. And then no, the like second that. part is I uh, I can't believe you referenced Tommy from It Is Enough. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Ames, yes. So, um, <laughs> so there's going to be a little bit of artwork added there, but uh, you get a feel. Oh, by the way, um, for those of you that are really enjoying, hang on here. For those of you that really enjoyed the theme song to Cash Grab, uh, I have a little surprise for you here. Here's the theme song to, cra to Cash Grab. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> it was That's fun. Great. So great. Um, so there's a lot of lot of fine fine tuning going on with this film, uh, and. Ryan Seacrest is the next Pat Sajak. That's right. That's right. So uh, is he? Is he really? Because that would make sense. Um, the uh, I have a friend who references Alex Trebek all the time, but he calls him Alex Trebel, and he always shows pictures of uh, Eugene Levy, as uh, <laughs> because on the old Canadian comedy show SCTV, they would do an Alex they'd have an Alex Trebek character called Alex Trebell. And he was at uh, Halfwits. He would host a show called Halfwits. Yes, yes. So Which, this friend of mine for years has been aggravating any of us that know him by always confusing, always replacing Alex Trebek with Alex Trebell. And <laughs> on the day that Alex Trebek passed away, all of his social media just lit right up. And it was all pictures of Eugene Levy, like a montage <laughs> Alex Trebell pictures. And I'm always going to respect him for that. <laughs> so let's see here. I have, I think I have another thing to show you real quick here. Uh, we get to see this. <laughs> Rebecca says, Cash Grab. Cash Grab can be a great song for a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> a little mink fungus for you on a nice. Winter night in the middle of the summer. So, get, get yourself a tall glass of malt liquor. And this is off of The Mind of Fungus, his 1971 release. I think uh, we can all agree that he's a genius. I think we're all feeling a little mean tonight. It's the soundtrack for Paul Pate's books. <laughs> so so I go 
I go in these in these um, swings uh, where I start doing I do music for a little while and then I get out of the music and go back to the art. So that's kind of so been a great way to keep everything fresh and oh yeah and fun. Um, going back to the cash grab theme, uh, Barbara says that music sounds like the "I Dream of Genie" theme song. I think we have a copyright issue. Mm. 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 Rebecca Bergman, my cousin, says I love it. Both of you are gifted and talented. You are rocking it. Cash grab can be a great song for a wedding. Well, some weddings are cash grabs. I want to get married again just to use that song. <laughs> so, uh, and look at those sideburns. I think they're talking about you. So, <laughs> wouldn't it be great if the cat was licking herself right now? He's cleaning his leg. Don't be gross. He is. Doing it. He is. <laughs> that is gross. This is illegal to do that. I can't. I can't. We're man, we are right on track. I can't believe yeah. this. Um, okay, so I did that, did that, did that, did that, did that, did that. Right, setting gonna, them up and knocking them down. Freestyle it now. Um, something that we were talking about before, uh, before we went on, on the air. Yeah. Um, is the good old sketchbook. Yeah. Back in the day, before the electronics boom, before I had an iPad, um, I did all of my artwork on with this and one of these here. One of these. Oh, be safe. I That's know sharp. you're not supposed to. I know. Don't, don't run with that. It's sharp. But it's but they're still they haven't faded yet. Um but I used to love drawing all the characters in the background. Oh, yeah. You know. So great. With one of these. Extra sharp. Extra sharp. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, um, but, um, I mean, the, that's one of the, um, one of the, <laughs> look at this guy. Look at the, the detail on that mesh shirt on that guy. Where else can you see detail like that on a mesh shirt? What a gr interesting group of people. Um, but I, those are a lot of background people, background characters. But if I had to do a background, speaking of, this is from San Giorno, and this is a restaurant that um, appears in the film. It's at the top of a building, like on, a, like on the roof top. And, uh, and then I colored it in Photoshop. But I, all this is to say, that yes, I did draw by hand, drew by hand. So I, I really enjoyed it. You um, still are. I mean, you still are. You're just doing it in a digital format as opposed to traditionally on paper, right? It's still drawing. It's You're still compiling images in the same way. You're just doing it in a more utilitarian approach by having it ready-made for you to cut and paste and where you need it to do your, your animatic. So yeah. You know, you've um, just saved yourself a transitional step by going from yes. paper to device. And Leanne is home now, everyone. Say hello to the people on camera, Leanne. Hello. Hi, Leanne. Hello. <laughs> okay. So How far behind I Becky are. is on. Here. I know, I saw it. Says, Jimmy has been sketching all his life. Jimmy's like that. Sketching. He even sketched my future boyfriend, not very gifted. Oh, that's terrible. Yes, many. Um, and then this person says, music, you can get anything you want at Jim's rest. Oh, okay, instead of Alice's restaurant. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, by the way, if you want to hear more music for free, there's two ways you can do it. You can go to YouTube. I have a music channel i guess it has a bunch of the albums and things like that on there and uh the fake explosion yes that's a real show i did seven episodes of the fake explosion and it's just a collection of the different music from the films different um music i've done over the years with cousins and friends and things like that 
and I am the king of the fake bands. So, but uh, there's the link. What's that? <laughs> there's the link. Yeah, there's the link right there. But if you go to my uh, YouTube, by the way, by the way, um, my YouTube channel. I guess the if you type in Jim Luhan three three three, I think that's the official address of the YouTube channel. But I always tell people to go to jimluhan.com because that takes you to my YouTube channel. It points sure. you there. But I, I would like to have 2,000 subscribers by now. I think I have like 1,000 something, which I know is kind of petty, but I am yeah, petty. That's, Call me Tom. that's a lot. Call me Tom. So, um, no, but I mean, I just, it would be nice to have some more eyeballs on there. But, but that's not why I do it. It's not why I do it. He said, Becky says, I said, you are very gifted, not, oh, for my boyfriend, hilarious. Okay, your boyfriend was not gifted. That's why he's not your boyfriend anymore. So so the reason I could pull fake explosion up on the screen like that. Yes. Is that, uh, is that Jim is a, a sponsor of my, of my uh, daily streaming. And yes. so I, I come up with these fake sponsors, like, Bob's House of Fish. We stay open late for the halibut. And fake explosion. You think you know music? You don't know nothing. I heard <laughs> that uh, Paul Pate's Pants Palace might be uh, coming soon. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're working on now. <laughs> pants half off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Half off on pants this week. Next week, um, <laughs> extending shorts full price. <laughs> um, but uh, oh, yeah. Jim on three 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 is so easy. Flows right off the keyboard. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, so with that, with that, I say, don't worry, I'm not wrapping it up just yet. Okay. But um, where am I? What's coming up for the full fungus in the next few weeks? Hold on, let me ask you. Jim? Yes? What's coming up for the full fungus in the next few weeks? Well, I am glad you asked that. As a matter of fact, let me tell you. We're going to see weathermen that are very rude and on cocaine. We're going to see um, inside a recording studio with many sycophants available. We're gonna see um, we're gonna see Mink Fungus in his heyday. And we're gonna see Mink Fungus in the late in the mid 70s, the hippie version of him. Um, we're gonna see some action and adventure. We're gonna see bowling alleys, we're gonna see people getting punched in the face, people getting hit with uh, batons that expand. Ooh. We're gonna see short red-headed mobsters. Mm. that have a short man complex are very, very violent. Uh, we're going to see uh, the gopher snake uh, taking on his opponents and kind of mouthing off against them and giving some very motivational advice to the camera more than once. Uh, we're going to see uh, a compound of a mobster in, ho in Hollywood. Uh, we're going to see a motel. We're going to see... Um, um, going to see a boxing gym or an MMA training gym. Um, I love boxes. Yes, we see lots of boxes. We're going to see, uh, let's see what else. We're going to see a bang, bang, pow, pow. That will happen. We're also going to see very soon, we're going to see a nightclub called After Sunset. Mm. We're going to see VIP lounges. We're going to see uh, celebrities being very rude to the wait staff and uh, sexually harassing. We're going to see um, just lots of fun stuff coming up. We're going to see um, danger and excitement at every turn. And that's what some of the things, that's like a third of what's coming up in the full fungus. But wait, there's more. But wait, if you order now. So, oh, and here's a great quote from yeah, yeah. She says, just, just like I've seen it all. You know, so good. And uh, I like this one too. A shroom with a view. <laughs> it's my favorite James Bond. Yeah. 
So, um, uh, yeah, so there's, I'm very excited to be working on the film still. I'm not sick of it yet. Um, I definitely want to put this in, in festivals and things like that when it's done. Um, and another thing, the way I'm looking at this, one full fungus is equivalent to four of my regular films. Because my regular film is about 20 minutes. And this is going to be like a 70-something minute film. So it's about, if I do the math correctly, four times 20 is 280 divided by six is 71. Carry the three makes. I can't count that high. Oh, I don't know. I get as high as 12 and then I run out of toes. Oh, hold on. Somebody had an actual question. Oh, by the way, we're going to wrap this up, but if, let's hear some rapid fire questions for me or Chris. Okay. okay. You didn't answer my you question. Give the first one to Jim. I'll be right back. Okay. Is the big Lebowski going to be in the gopher snake? How can I go to sleep if, okay, if, it, if I don't answer you? No. But uh, yes, that is a very big Lebowski vibe. The the um, the Gopher Snake, and uh, yep, eighty seventy minutes. Okay, Paul Paul Pate wants to know: Has there ever been a serial killer in any of your cartoons? Why, yes, Paul, there has. There was a serial killer named Osiris, and he is in the Mind of Lars Lazarus. Go check that so out. Good. That's a long film. That's like almost an hour. Oh, yeah, no. see, I think that when you calculate your films in, in the sense that this one is 70 minutes long, targeted, mm -hmm. right? But then so many of your other projects, if you sit down and calculate the interconnectedness of all those, right? And the fact that there, there's this lattice work of references back and forth between projects, it, it, it's, it's hard to look at it and it thinks it's just one project. It really mm -hmm. is a, a Luhanberg, so... So I, what you're saying is I need an HBO series. Mm. On uh, Hubble. Yes. On Hubble? On the Hubble. Hubble. Oh, Hubble. 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 On the Hobo Network. Um, so, yeah. So um, one thing I wanted to actually touch on was the music of the film. Not the music I played you, but how did I come to make this idea where this music was going to be kind of jazzy. And so I did mm -hmm. not set out to do a jazz movie. Um, what I did set out to do with the full fungus was reverse engineer the story of mink fungus, because I have the story of mink fungus. And then I wanted to kind of reverse out of it and have all these, how did we get here to this, to this story? Cause I've always known what the story of mink fungus is at its root and and I'm going to reveal something very key to the story that I have not revealed yet. This will be our grand finale reveal. So, which is going to be a huge, huge letdown. Okay. But I'm now going to reveal who the main villain, I've said his name, but you guys haven't seen him unless you've gone back and watched a film of mine called Seven Smiles. There we go. I'm talking about the famed, infamous New York mobster, Emiliano Koviak, a.k.a. Koviak. Now, this photo of him was taken in 1982. He's about 60-something, maybe 60 years old here, which would make him how old now, Chris? Many much. 12 toes. Okay. Somebody do the math, please. In all reality, 82, he's 60. Okay, let's say he's 60 in 1982. How old will he be now? Okay. So he's 40 years older than that. He's 102. Or he's 100 years old. Yeah, that's about right. He's about 100 years old now in, in the full fungus. And he's got oxygen and he's in, they're pushing him around in a wheelchair. Excellent. Excellent. And this is not a spoiler. This is, I've been saying this a long time, but kind of when I say what I've known the story of mink fungus this whole time, the, the root of the story is his mink fungus's relationship with Koviak. It's this weird symbiotic relationship. Uh, Koviak supplies mink with drugs to keep him hooked because Koviak is hooked on mink's music. 
there. That's oh. been the first time I've publicly revealed that. Those are so, ways. Yes, and everything is kind of reverse engineered out of that. And then the other key point of this is Chino Diamond, the 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 um, nice. the um, uh, private investigator I Chino Diamond. Idea. He's kind of figuring all this out, like he reveals all this stuff. So that's kind of the basic layout of <laughs> the whole fungus. Seven times seven equals. Put Barbara's up. That's my uh, favorite uh, one. Barbara says. <laughs> so. <laughs> Is there more than one fungus movie? And will you change the name to Fungi? I think the second film would be the perfect, that would be the perfect sequel movie is the full Fungi. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's when the box set comes out. <laughs> the jazz connection. I like that. That's good too. Yeah. COVID. Yeah, there's a lot of your uh, material. It's almost like, in, in a way, your process of working is not very much different to how young people imagine the fictitious worlds at, at play. Like, you know, this is my Barbie and, and my Barbie is this, you know, and she's interacting with the this GI Joe and, and they're going to get married and go away in this Corvette car, even though, you know, the size difference, but they'll get over it. And, and so those little dialogues that kids have that just take these crazy leaps of imagination. And then the, the next day when they're playing with the same toys, an entirely different cast, you know, and entirely different social situations. It's it's almost like you kept the Coles Notes versions of all those interactions that you you engaged in as a kid, and <laughs> it's just you know you're just drawing them forth now, and having those interactions play out and sitting down and doing the work to bring them to life. I I from the get-go knew that Koviak would be the main villain in the full fungus. It just, Excellent. it just went hand in hand. It just, it felt like, and then I, and I thought, well, it's kind of like building out from that core thought. And although it's funny because the core nugget of that thought of this film is not, doesn't get the most screen time probably it's it's figuring all this out that gets the screen time and again this isn't a spoiler it's not a big reveal it's um but it i mean it, it's a spoiler or a big reveal in the way that i haven't really said it on this program but um it's something i would show in the previews and stuff like that i want people to know that they have that weird uh symbiotic relationship i kind of like that um nice. let's see what uh dd william they have no idea what they are talking about and discussing Barbie. Yes, you, Chris and I don't have any idea sometimes when we talk Barbie. And we talk for hours and hours <laughs> about Barbie. So, but uh, that's just us. We're just a couple of Kens, you know. And, uh, wow, is there a Mink song called Seven Smiles? No, sir, Ken, but I'll tell you what. A little homework assignment. I think I said this before. Uh, somebody wanted to go back and... and through my movies and watch the film called Seven Smiles, you'll get a, a taste of Koviak, which sounds really there good. Go. Ooh. There you go. Mm. Ah, yes. I like the fact that you've aged him in real time. Yes. Well, and that, so that also, that's a the fact. Narrative. Yeah. So um, something else that is not a spoiler um, is that from the get-go, again, mink fungus is the late mink fungus. He's been dead since 1970. What? Yeah, seven or something like that. And it's rumored. It's on my records now. And it's rumored that Koviak um, had him assassinated. You know, blew up his car. So everyone knows this, Chris. I mean, if you know anything about music, so it's cool. We learn, we we learn more, more about the truth too. So. But uh, those are those are some of the things that are in the film. It's a pretty, very Chinatown-ish vibe. Meets the Big Lebowski. Love it. Meets Beavis and Butthead. Meets <laughs> meets Pulp Fiction. Meets Purple Rain. Meets Xanadu. Meets Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band with the Bee Gees and Peter Frampton. Meets the Oh man. Meets. Raiders of the Lost Ark meets the Los Angeles Raiders meets 
Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Pee Wee's Big Adventure meets Barbie. I think it all ties back. Did you know I just heard that they made a Barbie movie? I I'm I'm hearing this. Yes, I'm hearing this. It stars Tom Cruise as Barbie. Yeah. Okay. I think so. All right. I, I think don't know. So. I haven't watched a modern movie in a while. Well, it's funny because uh, obviously you gentlemen did not see Dee Dee's Barbie Fourth of July. Oh, I did. It was very Barbie. explosive. It scared me. Ironically. Tom Cruise is in a movie called The Fourth of July, born on the Fourth of July. So, um, so with that, I think this show has been a success. I think I've stayed on schedule, on target, on time, on point, on guard. So, Chris, <laughs> yes, is that uh, the infamous one? Yeah, so I Corbin. 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 Oh, He's looking at himself in the camera. Okay. He just stole his soul. So, Chris, um, everyone here knows you and loves you and such. But uh, anything you want them to do in your name? I want you to go out to the edge of town and steal a car that has an 8-track player in it and put Jim Morrison in the doors inside the 8-track player. Listen to it drive to the other side of town, get out, set the car on fire, and have a great day. <laughs> great. Oh, well, look at this one here. Cat and Pay says, I must go back and check out Koviak in his prime. Meow. I'm drawn to him. I've drawn him. So, I'm drawn to him. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, he's not a very nice guy. You might, uh, you know. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, if uh, if people want to come and uh, throw one page suggestion ideas at me for little one page stories, or if there's, uh, I, I don't know, I'm always open to to doing stuff with people, and and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to some of that. So if people are uh, haven't been uh, checking out the streams, come and have some fun. Yes, Becky, go check out Chris Runciman on uh, on uh, the YouTube. <laughs> think you like him and paul ends with a great quote meow meow you know paul a lot of us are here talking about meow but i think it's more about we are all of us that's the kind of cat i want to hang with all right that was my bottle so it's really good it was a 100 thank you thank you well Okay, let's do the walking one more time. Come on, give me the walking. I'm trying to work on my walking here, but I'm sounding like Vinny Barbarino. Can't do walking. <laughs> the, the Barbarino's great, though. Like, that's the best part. Yes. The thing that I get more surprised about, uh, the more the walking thing is just talking, right? But for me, it's the Werner Herzog. I like doing that one. Yeah. That's a good one. But That's the one that, uh, the uh, you know. element of death is happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, the horror of another year. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I got some Werner. I got some Werner. There you go. I can't follow Walking's that. difficult. Walking's like, I can't chew and walk in at the same time. So... Um, yeah, even though he chews up scenes, I'll take you one Herzog and raise you one Kubrick. Oh, beautiful! Yes, beautiful. Yes, so all right, with that, I say it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for having me on. Let's shake hands, you have to lower your hand. <laughs> Not that low. Come on, <laughs> all right, and excellent. Thanks, everybody. And my love says, Great show, guys. All right. Go to, go write your congressman. Peace out. We don't have congressmen. You don't even have a congress, man. Well, we have congress here. It's cold. Yes. A lot of the year. You have can address. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>